Hi there and welcome to this video series where I will be searching for the best trading strategy for cryptocurrency trading. In each video I'm going to test a strategy that is explained in a YouTube video, trading site or is publicly available for use. Each strategy will be tested on its performance by trading multiple digital asset pairs over their largest possible backtest period. The results of these tests are then compared with the results of earlier tested strategies. If you like these videos and want to see more of them, then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get notified for my newest content, then click on the bell icon. In this video, I will test a strategy that you can download from the Fractrade GitHub repository. It is the Supertrend strategy, which was made by Juan Carlos Soriano, if I say his name correctly. So all credits for making the strategy goes to him. You can find this strategy if you go to the Frag Trade site and click on the GitHub repository that's on the right hand corner. Then go up one level. And here you can see the strategies repository. We click on that. Go to user data and the strategies. And a little bit lower, you can see over here, it's the super trend strategy. And let's open it. And there you have it. This is the strategy what I'm going to test in this video. Now let's look at the strategy to find out what's going on. Before I continue, I'm not part an expert, so I might be wrong on some things. So please therefore do your own research before you use this code for trading. Okay, let's go a little bit further and see what's happening over here. What I can see here is that the default buy and sell parameters are over here for the super trend strategy. And what I can clearly see is that there are three super trend indicators for buying and three for selling. So actually this strategy makes use of six super trend lines for defining buy and sell moments. Okay, let's go a little bit further. And what I can see over here is that the author of the strategy also has defined some sell settings and I hope that he has got these settings with the help of earlier backtests and hyper optimization. But nonetheless, I will use these settings with my initial backtest and later on when I do my hyper optimization, I will create some better ROIs, I hope. This also accounts for the stop loss, which I can clearly see is a minus 26.5% for the strategy. And what I also notice here is that the strategy makes use of a trading stop. And that is good to know, so I can also do some trading stop loss in my hyper optimization. And what I can see over here is that the author has chosen to use the one hour time frame for this strategy. And I'm curious to see if this strategy performs the best on this time frame or maybe on another time frame. Now let's move a little bit further down to see what's over there. Okay, when I look closely at these next settings, then I notice that these are the spaces to be used for hyper optimization. So this file seems to be ready for optimization and I do not have to produce a whole new separate file for this. However, what concerns me is that the amount of parameters to optimize is very large. It looks to me that they have to produce a lot of data frames and I hope that my virtual machine can handle this. Now, if I look at these indicators, then I see that they are not predefined but produced by for loops. So I guess that the initial values at the top of this file will be the default settings for backtesting and these for loops will be used for producing the necessary indicators for the data frames that will be used for hyper opting. Let's go a little bit further to the bottom of this strategy. And here you see the buy and sell trend. When I look at the code for producing a buy signal, I see that my earlier thought about the three super trend indicators is indeed true. Each indicator has to be equal to up, apparently, a up value, uh, before there will be a buy signal generated. And the same goes for the downtrend. The super trend indicators each have to produce a signal which is a value that is down before there will be a sell action. Now what I see at the bottom of this file is that this is the section where the indicator is programmed. And it seems that this is a custom indicator that is used in the code above. Okay, I don't think I will go to the complete code of this function because this is not a Python code video. But what I can see quickly is that at the end of these calculations, some data frame columns are dropped and not returned from the function itself. And if I go at the end of this function, then I can see that this is what actually is returned from the function. A data frame column with the ST value and a STX column with the trend direction. And this is where the up and down value come from. 
So now that we have this clear, I'm curious to see how these super trend indicators look if you plot them on a chart. Here I have opened trading view and I have the Bitcoin chart in front of me. To get the three super trend indicator lines, I have used the indicator that was built by Marx Babu. So I added two of these to my chart and you already can see the indicator that is used for buying when all three have the up signal. Now I have changed these settings to correspond with the same settings as in the strategy file. So in this case all three indicators have to be green or yellow and green to get a buy signal. Now I did the same with the sell signal and I'm going to close this and open this one. And here you see the indicators that produces sell signals. Again, I have used parameter settings as in the strategy file that produces the sell signals. And here you can see where the sell signal come from. When all three lines are red, then the sell signal is produced. So when you add all the lines of the buy and sell indicators together, you get this picture. The general feeling I get here is that there are a lot of indicators that have to give buy signals and sell signals and it looks a little bit messy to me. But maybe I am completely wrong and this strategy is extremely profitable and there's only one thing that I have to do to find out and that is to backtest this strategy on multiple time frames. So let's continue with that. After backtesting and writing down all the backtest information in the sheet, I have the following results. The best time frame is the 4 hour time frame. It has the largest profit of 151%, which could have hypothetically turned $1000 into $2517 over the backtest period. The drawdown is 965% and the possible risk of ruin is 8.25%. The reason why this risk of ruin is low is that there are more winning trades than losing trades. You can also see that this strategy also counts a lot of draws. And you can say that this is a good sign because the trade did not turn into a losing position. However, because you have to pay trading fees to the exchange, I consider these trades also as losers. It might technically not be completely right and you may have your own opinion about this, but that's the way I think about it. And a final thing, I do not really like the amount of drawdown that this strategy has. If there was a way to reduce this drawdown, then there might be better results to get. Oh, and before I go further with the hyper session, backtesting the 5 minute time frame took a long while and my virtual machine arrived out, so I did not get these results. Now let's proceed with the hyper session. Before I continue with the hyper results, I have some remarks. The author of the code did a good job by already providing the buy and sell spaces and pre-processed the super trend indicator for use with hyper -opt. I had to modify the strategy a little bit to enable hyper -opt, but that was no big deal. However, as I said earlier in the video, there were so many indicator parameters to calculate and also ROI, stop loss, training stop loss were part of the equation that my virtual machine could not handle the situation and froze up on me a couple of times. I noticed that the hyperopt function pre-calculates every data frame on every coin and every combination beforehand before even trying to calculate the best parameter settings. So I can imagine that this takes a well equipped machine to do all these things and I do not have that machine. That's when I decided to reduce some settings to pass this stage. I reduced the amount of coins to backtest this time, so for the hyperopt session I only used 5 coins and I also uh, did a 100 epochs hyperopt session. 
Finally, I had to split the high prop into two parts to get some output on the analysis phase. So I first did a high prop session to calculate the best ROI, stop loss and trading stop loss on the default settings. And after that, I used these outputs to do a second high prop setting to see which buy and sell parameters would be advised. I will leave all these settings and my files on my website so you can reference these and can use them for your own tests. You can see the final result of these high prop sessions and back tests in this sheet. When you stick to the default Supertrend indicator parameters and only look for better ROI stop loss and trading stop loss settings, then you indeed get better results in comparison with the original settings, but they are not spectacular. Changing the Supertrend indicators after that gave you even better results, so this proves to be even better. But the win rate gets slightly worse and also these settings do not work as good on all the pairs. So with my score calculation, only the ROI and stop loss change gets slightly better results. But again, take into consideration that these hyper op sessions did not go as originally planned and thus these results have to be taken with some skepticism. Now let's see what happens if I plot the super trend indicators on a chart with my hyper op settings. And then I will show you how these look on the chart. So if I close this and I watch the buy trend, then what you can see is that roughly there are two super trends available. The lower super trends over here, which I consider as one super trend with a kind of small different values, but nonetheless, it is almost the same path that follows. And there is one super trend that almost follows the complete price action of this chart and let's see which super trends have the same okay so super trend one and super trend three are almost the same path so seven eight and seven twenty one almost have the same path for super trends and let me see if this is the same case with the cell parameters. Here you can see these are the results from the high prop session, which I've entered into this indicator. And if I show this, then you can see that this is almost the same as the buy trend. You can see one lower super trend and one upper super trend, which follows the price almost exactly. And let's see which two super trends follow this price. And do it to the side. So super trend one is okay. That follows the price. And the second super trend is also following the price. So this super trend one and two follow the price and super trend three is what I consider the real super trend. And when I show them all together, then you roughly can see that there is a lower super trend boundary and an upper super trend which almost follow the price and this looks to me like this is a sma crossover or a moving average crossover but instead uh, with using moving averages we use the super trends i do not see why i cannot investigate another super trend strategy which only follows one trend and then follows the price so if price is above the super trend then you give a buy signal and when the price gets below the super trend you get a sell signal and i consider this a subject for a future video but before i continue with the overall strategy leak i quickly want to inform you about the way i do these tests in this overview i've written down the setup for these tests and also the method for finding out the best trading strategy and yes one could argue that some choices are not correct and i know that some choices are arbitrary like the amount of open trades the choice of crypto pairs start of the backtest choice of compounding the profits etc etc but the point is that this is the way i do my backtest to find a profitable strategy and everyone should develop their own way of testing and getting a certain amount of trust in their own methodology that is why i say that you always should do your own backtest after watching my videos and before using the strategy and your own trading bot or trading methods so with this out of the way let's see how this super trend strategy performs in comparison with my earlier tests 
And as you can see, the super trend performs the worst of all strategies. And actually, this surprises me a little bit. Maybe this is because it uses a lower time frame and thus uses more trades. Or maybe it's because the particular strategy uses two sets of three indicators for producing buy and sell signals. After watching the indicator with the hyper opted parameters, I think this indicator should get a second chance and be used in a much less complicated way. But for now, keep this result in the back of your head if you want to use this strategy for yourself. And I cannot repeat myself enough on this, do your own research before actually using any strategy that is freely available on the internet. And with this said, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want to get notified on my newest videos, then click the bell icon. And I see you in the next video. Goodbye.